Welcome to Questpons YouTube channel. A very very warm welcome to this one hour of free course around AZ 900 Azure Fundamental Certification. So in this one hour of free course, we will cover seven questions, you know, around uh, CAPEX, around OPEX, around EAS, PAS, and CAS, and so on. But before I get started, a very good news out here, I want to announce. Uh, if you go and if you share this video on your LinkedIn, on your Twitter, or Facebook, you get AZ900 practice question PDF for free. So once you share this video, do email us on questpond at questpond.com so that we can provide you the free PDF. So in this one hour, we'll be covering seven questions, right? But before I start with those uh, seven questions, um, um, you know, let us go ahead and first understand what exactly is this AZ900 certification? What kind of syllabus do we have? You know, how many topics do we have? What is the intention and goal of this exam? And how is this course structured? So this course of one hour, how is it structured? Uh, you know, for preparing the exam, right? So before we uh, go into the seven questions, let us first understand what exactly is AZ900 certification exam. AZ900 is a Microsoft certification exam which tests your fundamental knowledge of cloud and Azure services. So anyone out there who's making his first move into cloud and specifically Azure cloud, then this certification is for you. So now let us go ahead and let us see, you know, what does this exam contain? What kind of syllabus is laid out? What is the intention behind this exam from the Microsoft point of view, right? So I'm going to go and uh, search here Azure 900. Now you can see uh, there is some, there is a, there is a very bad word here called as Azure 900 dumps. Uh, I would suggest everyone to avoid dumps. Remember that certification can expire, but knowledge cannot expire. Right. So I would suggest that please take this exam from the knowledge point of view and this course will target from the knowledge point of view. Right. So I'm going to still go ahead and search Azure 900. You can also search for AZ 900. Right. You can also go ahead and search for AZ 900. If you search for AZ 900, you can see this website out here docs.microsoft.com. Please note that there are a lot of other websites as well, which can come here as an ad banner. Right, for example, uh, it's not coming for now, but uh, Azure 900, if you go and search like this, there are chances, you know, that you can get some ads out here, right? So do not click on those ad links because those ad links are not coming from the authority Microsoft website. The authority Microsoft website, you know, where the syllabus is described is this one, docs.microsoft.com. So you can see the first link out here exam AZ 900 we will go and we we'll click on that link and you can see on this link you know there is a small uh, one page explanation out here and uh, if you go and if you read this explanation uh, carefully you can you can see out here that this is a fundamental exam so this is an exam which is a more of a foundational course so please note that AZ 900 is a foundational course for people who want to start with cloud for people who want to start with uh, Azure, right? So let us go out here and let us try to download the exam uh, syllabus out here. So somewhere, you know, they should give out the syllabus. So you can see here, download exam skills outline. Please note that um, if you are going and if you are visiting this website after a year, it is possible that some of these links name can change. But you can see here, download the exam skills outline. And you can very clearly see out here that this exam has four skills you know which it which it will test so cloud concept azure services security and trust and azure pricing and sla right so i'm going to go and uh, download this uh, skills outline out here and you can clearly see out here that <coughs> there is a uh, there is a long page document out here which describes the syllabus in more detail right uh, so now you can go ahead and you can read the syllabus. You can read, you know, what kind of audi audience profile Microsoft is expecting. But I would give you a quick one minute understanding of the broader level of syllabus in AZ 900. The complete AZ 900 is divided into four sections. First one is the cloud concept, you know, wherein they expect you to understand what is cloud. They expect you to understand what is CapEx, what is OpEx and so on. And uh, they have allocated approximately 15 to 20% of uh, 
concentration on it right the second uh, topic you know is about azure services means what kind of services microsoft is is giving out to you and uh, what knowledge you should have out there right now remember that when you talk about azure services from the from this exam point of view they only want the what part of it what means for example that uh, what is this Internet of Things services provided by Microsoft or probably what kind of services are provided in big data or what kind of services are provided in Azure DevOps. So they want to, want you to know, you know, the what part of the service. It is okay that if you do not know how to go and create the service or if you do not know the internals of it, but they at least want to know, want you to let know that what kind of services Microsoft is providing, right? Uh, then the third chapter, or I will rather say that for me, this is the third chapter, which is around Azure pricing and SLA. So basically, how is the pricing calculated, right? How, how are the subscription managed? Do we have a free account or not? So, so, so basically over here, uh, and also we have this pricing calculator, uh, you know, which can help you to calculate the pricing. So here, it, you know, this topic is focused around the pricing part. And the most important topic, the fourth one, is around the security and trust. At the end of the day, when people want to go on cloud out there, they are very worried about you know, their data. A lot of countries out there uh, do not even want to share data on Azure. For example, if you look at India, then the Indian government does not really want to share their data on Azure cloud, right? Why? Because it is, uh, it is the country's data, right? So how is Microsoft addressing those issues? How it is making the customer feel comfortable, right? So all is there in this chapter as well, right? And every chapter out there is allocated some percentage. You can see this is 25 to 30% and this one here is 30 to 35% and so on, right? So four topics. So there are four topics in AZ900, cloud concepts, Azure services, Azure services has the highest percentage of uh, concentration of uh, concentration out there and then uh, security and trust and finally Azure pricing and SLA. Also, let me give you a brief about how this course is structured, how this course will be executed. So normally if you see any course out there, first what they do is, you know, they teach you the concept. So they will have a topic, they will teach you the concept and then Around that concept, you know, uh, we go through the questions and then we answer, right? But here we won't follow this methodology. We will follow a bit uh, a different methodology where we will first take the questions. So we'll take question number one must be, we will go through the question and then around that question, you know, whatever concept is needed, we will do that concept and then we will answer that question, right? So why this format? If you look at the syllabus of AZ900, it is very vast. You know, for example, you can see here, let us take this, you know, describe core Azure services, 35% allocated to it. So this is the main topic. And if you look at, you know, subtopics, for example, look at this is a subtopic. In this subtopic itself, there are so many topics, virtual machines, virtual machines, scale sets and app services and ACI and Kubernetes. So for even if, if I take each one of these subtopics, subtopics, you know, it will take so much time to uh, complete that topic and then take the question, right? So by following the QCA way, what will happen is if we will be focused, right? So we will be very much focused around that question. Second, we will learn in small bits. So we will have small successes and that will make our uh, learning more effective, right? So. The format of this uh, complete course is question, concept only around the question. And when I when I teach this concept, I will point towards the lesson. So when I say that, okay, uh, this question is for chapter one. So what I will do is I will go ahead and say that this is uh, the, the first chapter one out here and this question belongs that. Or must be if there is a question which is coming from the second chapter, I'll say, okay, this question is from the second chapter, right? So whenever I explain the concept, I will link it to the chapters as well. So, so that, you know, you have an idea that what we are doing, right? So the format is first questions, then concept, and then finally the answer. So uh, let us get started with the first question. So let us start with the first question of AZ900. So you can see the first question of AZ900 certification is flashed on the screen out there. Now, before I answer this question, this question is related to chapter one. 
so if you remember in this this chapter one which was about cloud concept which has like 15 to 20 percent of uh, concentration in this you know we have a topic here called as capex which means capital expenditure and opex which means operational expenditure right so if you understand the if you understand the terminology of capex and opex you can easily answer this question so let us first try to understand what exactly is capex and opex in the context of azure now let us try to analyze what kind of infrastructure cost we need to invest on when you say that you are buying a server uh, or you are hosting uh, a website and so on, right? So the first thing is you need to go and invest on the hardware. So basically you will go and you will buy uh, X amount of uh, configuration, which will have an X amount of RAM. It will have an X amount of hard disk and so on, right? So you will invest on the hardware. You will also invest on the software. For example, must be you are buying a license OS or must be you are buying MS Office or you know Office softwares or must be antivirus you know so you have an upfront hardware cost and software cost which you need to invest so this is termed as capex capital expenditure expenditure which is invested upfront right now once you start using this infrastructure right you will have running cost also attached to it like for example probably uh, you will need a vendor who will look at your look look after your hardware or must be you have a salaried employee you know who will look after your hardware right so you will have a salary cost attached to it wherein you will recruit some people to look after this hardware right um, then you can have uh, other cost you know for example backup you know must be you if you have some backup strategy then you will buy something on a kind of a, a media drive and that media drive again you have to go and invest and also uh, probably you will be also a person will be there to do a backup and so on right so you have some kind of a running cost you know which is termed as opex so when you say that you are going to go and build your infrastructure manually you have these two kind of cost capex and opex but now when you talk about cloud cloud is pay as you go pay as you go means for example let us say i want to go and uh, have a windows 2019 server you know with a windows operating system and so on so what i can do is i can just go to azure out here and i can just type here virtual machine right and i can go and i can create a virtual machine which is having windows 2019 data center installed so you can see here i can go and see here i can use ubuntu i can use red hat but also i can use the windows 2019 data center i can decide you know that i want two cpu with 8 gb or must be four CPU with 16 GB right RAM and RAM and so on right and all of this billing you know will be done to me pay as you go monthly right that means that let us say I can take this infrastructure I can use it for two months three months and if I feel no like it is not working out for me I just leave it there in case of upfront investment what happens is let's say that you do not like that hardware you have to literally then give it out at a very low cost in second hand in second hand also things really don't go out and then you have to literally donate it out and so on right so here again the benefit is that you don't have to talk about depreciation you don't have to really look into how to go ahead and you know leave that hardware you know afterwards it is used right uh, and the second important thing is even at the uh, from the software perspective let us say you are having we are using windows 2019 data center for now and tomorrow you say we have we want to have windows 2020 data center no issues delete this vm take a backup and create a new vm with windows 2020 right and over here now once you have invested upfront on the license cost you do not have any option there isn't any option really to upgrade directly right so when you talk about azure when you talk about cloud it is a rental model it is like you know asking yourself that should I buy a car or should I go to Ola and Uber, right? So Azure or cloud is a rental model. It is pay as you go, right? Now with all this knowledge, let us go and try to now look at that question, right? So with this understanding of capex and opex, let us now look, go ahead and look at this question. So mark that the below statements are true and false. Pay as you go, pay as you go is an example of capex, false, why? The time you have used the word pay as you go, 
the capex word is completely opposite to it right it azure vm vm means virtual machine azure virtual machine instances are example of opex true so you can create a vm use it for 3 4 days and delete it creating your own data center means your own hosting center is an example of capex true so when you say you want you are going to go and create your own data center you are responsible for hardware you are responsible for procuring the licenses you are responsible for looking at all that infrastructure and also you are responsible for opex right so false true and true now i would like to make a very important note out here az900 course this course is more targeted towards certification so if you want to really go and learn azure more practically like creating a virtual machine filling these values and then connecting the virtual machine by using the rdp protocol i would suggest to go and watch my course learn azure step by step which is hosted on this channel you can see i'm flashing on the screen and in that you can go ahead and you can look at the topics the, these topics are more practical oriented you know more from the perspective of how to do things it has nothing to do with certification as such right but this course is focused on certification so the goals and motives of this course and that course both are different right so in case if you're wondering that okay why not why don't you go and create an azure virtual machine and show us the demo then that will make this course very big right so please go ahead and watch my practical course out there you know where i've explained the complete azure thing step by step concentrated and it is more than 12 hours of course i'm sure you will enjoy it so let's start with question number two. Now this question number two is again related to the first chapter describe cloud concept and again it is related to capex and uh, opex and you know the economies of cloud right. So it's related to the first topic. So let us uh, see uh, this question. So this question says that mark you know which of the below statements are true or are correct. So let's look at statement number one. Azure provides flexibility between capex and opex so as i've said uh, in the previous question i have explained uh, capex and opex uh, and i also explained that when you talk about cloud it is all about capex and opex right so definitely when it comes to azure when it comes to cloud not only to azure when it comes to any cloud it's either amazon or it's either azure right it's always about flexibility of uh, finances so this statement is true Let's look at the second statement. If you create two Azure virtual machines that use the B2S size, that use the B2S size, each virtual machine will generate the same monthly cost. First, let us try to understand, you know, what exactly is this B2S size of virtual machine? So this word B2S comes, you know, when you actually go to create a virtual machine. So you can see here, uh, if I if I say that go and create a virtual machine right on Azure in that you know uh, one of the options which I get here is select size so you can see here uh, there are different size of virtual machine it has different configuration for example you can see we have a D2S series we have a B2S series we have a B4 series so you can see lots of series out here so the question says that if I select this B2S kind of series machine out here right uh, if I select this B2S size machine will it always generate the same monthly cost right so let us try to understand what exactly B2S size of machine means this word B in this B2S means burstable burstable virtual machines now when you take any infrastructure on cloud right you pay for two things so when you take a virtual machine on azure or, or any cloud right you pay for two things one is you pay for so the total cost so the total cost is equal to to keep the virtual machine running to just keep the virtual machine running right so i'll say that this is the this is the baseline cost so just to just keep it running right so we'll we'll term this as baseline right so one is that you need a baseline cost right and another one is when you start using it that is a usage cost so in other words for example now let us say you have taken a virtual machine right this is the time 
okay and this is the cpu performance right so to just keep it running let us say that you are using a hundred percent performance so let's say you are using a hundred percent performance right and when you actually use it there is a spike so must be you are using 200 percent of the cpu right so now you will get build for this period as well as definitely for the usage right and this is this one here the baseline is running on a hundred percent cpu performance so you get build build the same kind of quantity even for just keep it keeping it running right so what the b2s or the burstable virtual machine says that burstable virtual machine says that when uh, when we have the baseline cost will be reduced you know by running at a low cpu performance so to just keep the virtual machine running we will not run at 100% we will run at 5% and when you need it when you need it yes definitely at the time we will shoot up to 200% right and again we will come back to 5% right so must be uh, you know rather than running on a on a full cpu cycle we will run at a less cpu performance so this is what the b2s virtual machines virtual machines promise right they run at a low cpu performance during your uh, baseline period right and when the cpu is needed they run at 200% or whatever percent you want and you get build maximum only for this time and you get build very much minimum you know for the baseline period right so if you go and if you see uh, on the on the microsoft website you can see here introduce b series our new burstable vm size right you will see out here there is a table and this table says that if you take a standard b1 s series we will run at 10 percent baseline cpu performance right and maximum we will go for 100 percent right then you have a standard b1 s series which is like 20 percent and then 100 percent and so on right so you can see here that there is a baseline cost which is given and then the maximum uh, CPU performance is given out here. Now let us go ahead and let us try to attempt the question. If you create two Azure virtual machines, two Azure virtual machines that use the B2S size, each virtual machine will generate the same monthly cost, right? So definitely the answer is no. Why? Because must be, you know, these two B2S size machines you have, right? but the workload can be very different for example one b2s size machine can be like this can be spiky right the another b2s size machine must be just runs only for one period so definitely the cost of this and cost of this uh, will be different you know why because azure is all pay as you go pay as you use so this this vm here will be built more and this vm here will be built less you know why because this vm is using uh less cpu right so the answer is this correct no it is false remember the top one is true right let us look at the third question when a azure virtual machine is stopped you continue to pay the storage cost associated with it right this is true because if you go and if you see in the portal let me just show you So if you see here, if you go to create a virtual machine out here, you will see that one is yes, you need to go and give, you know, the kind of uh, CPU you need, you need, the RAM you need, you know, the type of server you need, right? But there is one tab out here, which is the hard disk, the storage. Remember, I'm creating a virtual machine. And if you look at this hard disk, you know, there is a premium hard disk, there is a standard hard disk, right? And all of this will have a cost. When you say that you want to use an HDD hard disk or an SSD hard disk, an SSD hard disk is, is costly, right? And definitely you will be having a cost attached to it, right? So the answer here is when Azure virtual machine is stopped, in order that this virtual machine stays on the hard disk of Azure, right? It will need something, right? And that's where the storage cost comes into picture. So yes, we continue to pay for it, right? So the first one is true. Azure provides a flexibility between CapEx and OpEx, yes. The second one is um, false. You know why? Because the B2S machines are meant for some other purpose, right? It has nothing to do with the monthly cost. The monthly cost depends upon how much you use it. And when a virtual, so this is false. And when a virtual machine is stopped, 
yes you still continue with the with the cost of your hard drive why because you must have kept some files in that you must have written some source code so for that you need to use storage and if you need to use storage then depending on you have used hdd or sdd you will you need to pay for it so this is also true so true false and true so let's start with question number 3 a company is planning on creating several virtual machines in azure so they would be using the virtual machine service so virtual machine service belongs to which category below so does it belong to eas does it belong to pias cias or fias right now this question uh, belongs again to the first topic out here describe cloud concept so in this topic you know they want they want you to understand the economies of scale the capex and opex and there is one more section you know where they want you to understand the three different type of services that is eas pias and cias right so let's understand uh, this concept now uh, when you go to azure cloud or i'll say when you go to any cloud out there and when you buy any service right so let's say if you are going and if you are buying sql server or if you are buying uh, oracle or if you are creating a virtual machine or if you are doing anything out there right all of these uh, products you know they belong to one of these categories so the first category is eas infrastructure as a service the second category is pias platform as a service and the final category is cias software as a service right so when you say you know you are buying anything out there on cloud you are buying from one of these categories or the product belongs to one of these categories so let us understand each one of them first is the infrastructure part infrastructure means you want to only go and buy some hardware from from azure or from amazon so let us say you want to go and just hire 8 gb ram with 80 gb hard disk for 10 days right so that that means that you are actually buying from this category infrastructure as a service the second one is platform as a service with azure there are lots of products you know which comes in built into azure platform so for example azure storage or must be azure fabric right and lot of other things out there now these uh, softwares you know you cannot run without the azure framework let me repeat that sentence again this software these softwares which are in in pass in platform as a service or pias you cannot run without azure framework for example you cannot run azure storage like blobs and queues inside windows operating system or linux operating system you need to have azure for that and they are only available on the azure framework right so these softwares are tightly coupled to the azure framework and they are available at a very cheaper rate then comes the software as a service like for example sql server now sql server is a software which i can install in windows i can install even the 2019 can be installed in linux as well and also i can install it anywhere else right and also i can install on azure right so so that means that this is a software which has been used for a long time locally and now that it is available through the azure platform in a rental model so rather than buying the whole sql server license in one go now you can use the monthly or the rental model so software like sql server must be excel word powerpoint and why not you know even your application like inventory or accounting can also come into software as a service so the question here this question here is is trying to make you understand or trying to uh, check you know that do you know where the virtual machine lies in so does the virtual machine lie in eas pias cias or fias right now um so fias means function as a service right so there is something called as a function as a service so function as a service means you only want you don't want to host a whole web application you want to host a just a simple function right for now just leave this part you know let us focus on this i can just tell you that that is not an answer for that right so must be for now you can just remove your eyes from this so now if you talk about virtual machine right that means it is only the hardware part so if you go and see in azure really so when i go and i create a virtual machine so you can see here i am creating a virtual machine so what do i specify i specify the ram i specify the cpu right 
I also specify the hard disk like premium, standard, HDD and so on, right? So it's mostly I specify the, uh, you know, the, the hardware part to it, the networking part and so on, right? But I do have, a, I do need at least the operating system. I need the minimal operating system to access it. So what happens is, you know, a lot of developers feel that, oh, like, isn't we are using, a, we are even buying a software out there. You are buying a software, but it is not really a software. It is the OS. Without the OS, you can't use the hardware through the internet, isn't it? So don't let yourself confuse that when you actually buy a virtual machine out there and because you buy an operating system software like Windows Server and Red Hat or anything, right? That means that it becomes a platform as a service or a software as a service, right? Virtual machines are purely infrastructure, right? So the answer here is, where does the Azure virtual machine service belongs to? It belongs to EAS, infrastructure as a service. So right answer is A. So let's take question number four. Again, this question number four belongs to the EAS, PAS and CAS uh, topic. So your company plans to migrate all the data and resources to Azure. The company migration plan states that only PaaS should be used, platform as a service. Platform as a service means services which are tightly coupled with Azure, right? Those should be only used, right? Remember in the previous uh, question, we discussed about EAS, we discussed about PAS, and we discussed about CAS, right? So that you should use only this, this, you know, why? Because if you use infrastructure, then you have to do everything yourself. Right? So we don't want to do everything ourselves. So first is the solution they have proposed is for web application, we'll create an Azure app service. So whatever is your web application code and your compiled code you want to host it, we will use Azure app service. And the second one is Azure virtual machine that have Microsoft SQL Server installed. Okay, let's start with the first solution, Azure app service. So Azure app service is a pass. So when you say that you want to go and host uh, web applications on Azure, we have something called as an app service. So you have to go and you have to create this app service, right? And uh, once you create this app service, you can go and you can host a .NET code in this. You can host must be a Python, a PHP. So depending on what kind of technology you select, you know, this will this will function accordingly, right? So this is a, a platform as a service. It will help you to very easily migrate your code, you have to just go and say that, for example, if your code is in .NET Core, you can just say .NET Core out here. It will go and it will actually go and create a workspace for you where you can go and host your .NET code, right? So this is platform as a service because this feature, you cannot really run without Azure. This is tightly coupled with Azure. It makes your life easy, right? I would really suggest to go and watch my videos on learn step-by-step -step Azure, you know, where I've explained all of these things practically. So here I'm trying to cover from the certification point of view, but in those lessons I have covered things more practically. I would really suggest to go and watch those practical lessons and then look at these questions and with answers which I'm discussing out here. So first thing, yes, this Azure app service is a platform as a service and it meets this demand. Now look at the second option, Azure virtual machine that have Microsoft SQL Server installed. Now here, what it means is that you will actually go and you will create an Azure VM. Inside this VM, you will install SQL Server. This has nothing to do with Azure. You can do it even offline. And this is more of a infrastructure as a service because the time you say that you are going to go and create a VM, that means you are doing things yourself, right? For example, when I say create an app service, what the app service does is he does not, he, he will go and he will, figure out you know which vm one of there are a lot of shared vms out there in one of those shared vms he will create a workspace for you so he does not really tell you that now you have to create a vm and then install iis right so it takes uh, it takes away a lot of your work right and that's what is pass but here when you say virtual machine that means this is infrastructure as a service so does this solution meet your goal no it does not meet your goal for this if, if I want to meet my goal, if I want to make it as a pass service, I should be using Azure SQL. So I should use the Azure app service and Azure SQL. Azure SQL, if you see, is again a platform as a service. So you can go and you can see here SQL server. So we can see this is the SQL server here, which is nothing but Azure SQL. 
And if you look at Azure SQL, it is quite different in the sense that it's the same SQL server at the back end, but you know the way it is built. For example, if you look at your SQL server, which you buy from offline or which you buy as a DVD or must be as a separate software, you have to pay it in one go. But in this case, you know, uh, when you say that uh, you want to go ahead and use Azure SQL, there is something called as DTU. And by using the DTU, he will calculate depending on how much SQL you have used, that many, that much charge only he will he will allocate to you. So you can see that there is an elastic pool and so on. So if you use an Azure SQL database, it will go and it will figure out one of those VMs out there, which is a shared VM. He will go and he will create SQL server in it. He will create the database instance for you and you can go ahead and you can connect and you can install it. So creating a virtual machine is out of question, right? So remember, uh, Azure SQL is different, different in the sense there is a, um, uh, you know, this Azure SQL, which is there out here, helps you to, uh, it will use the same SQL server, the classic SQL server, what you have, but then it does a lot of like elastic pool, DTU, pay as you go. I would suggest to see my SQL server videos where I've explained how to create an Azure SQL uh, database, how to do DTU and so on, right? So Azure SQL is pass. SQL Server Pure, installation of SQL Server, the time you say I want to install SQL Server, that means you are doing infrastructure, you are actually doing things yourself, right? So for this answer to be yes, this Azure Virtual Machine with SQL Server needs to change to Azure SQL Server, Azure SQL, then this answer is yes. But for now, the answer is no, because Virtual Machine is infrastructure as a service. Now, this is again a different flavor of the question which we're discussing out here. So it's the same question. Your company plans to migrate all its data and resources to Azure and you have to use only pass. But you can see here he has given a right solution. It says that you want to create an Azure app service and Azure SQL database, right? So in this case, the answer would be yes. So please note that please see the solution properly, read the solution properly, understand the concept. Don't just buy it and go. I've seen people, you know, they just look at the first question and they just say yes or no. That's not the way to look at it, right? So please read the question. Check, you know, that this is a pass or not. This is a yes or not. And then accordingly answer. So the same question which I just discussed, right? This question is a kind of an opposite to it with a proper solution. So the previous question had a uh, had a wrong solution, so that's why the answer was no, but this is a proper solution. Azure App Service is a pass and Azure SQL Server Database is a pass. A pure SQL Server Database, which you, which we install offline, is more of a EAS, it's more of a software, I'll say rather, right? So the answer is yes, this is a right solution. So let's start with question number five. You plan to migrate a web application to Azure. This web application is used by external users. You need to recommend a cloud deployment solution to minimize the amount of administrative effort. So we need less amount of administrative effort. This word is important here, administrative effort. So what should you include in the recommended solution? So should you do CAS, PAS, EAS or database as a service? At this moment, we can safely exclude this because there is no database here, right? Now, remember that all of these uh, three things out here, that is EAS, and then on the top of it, we have the platforms of Azure, that is PAS, and then we have the CAS, right? The more you are at the infrastructure level, the more administrative effort you have, right? So your administrative effort increases, you know, if you are at the bottom layer. Because if you are at the infrastructure layer, that means that you are responsible to install the to install the firewall. You have to configure the firewall to install the antivirus, to install the software, to do everything, right? So definitely, the administrative effort here is very high. So we can exclude EAS for now. Now let's talk about the software as a service. Now when you say web application, the web application itself is the software, right? So it, it's not an it means for example if you have a ready-made web application out there then install to install that is a different thing right but here we are talking about deploying our code 
So we don't have any ready-made code out there, right? So definitely here again, the software as a service is not logical. So what, what is remaining out here is a platform as a service. So in, in platform as a service, you know, we have something called as app service, which I've showed in this tutorial. And also you can go and watch our tutorial of Learn Azure. So by using app service, what you can do is you can create an app service and then you can go and you can deploy your code into the app service and the app service will find out the right VM. So there are lots of VMs out there. It will find out the right VM, right? And deploy your code into that VM, into that shared VM. So we don't have to worry about anything. At the background, you know, there are a lot of VMs, shared VMs. And when we deploy our code in the app service, it will hunt the web server. It will hunt the virtual machine and deploy our code in the VM. So for us, you know, to create a virtual machine and then to figure out the web servers and then to go and deploy our code, we don't have to worry anything. We have to just deploy to this platform as a service given called as app service. So the right answer out here is because of this word, uh, minimize the amount of administrative effort is pass platform as a service. And in Azure, the right platform as a service to deploy your web application is app service. So B is the right answer. So let's start with question number six. Mark true and false the below statements. A platform as a service that hosts web apps in Azure provides full control of the OS that hosts the application, right? So the, what the question means is that when you create an app service remember app service uh, is the service you know to host web applications on azure so when you create a web a app service out here so you can see out here please go through the videos of learn azure step by step where i've explained things uh, things practically so when when we go ahead here and we say that yes i want to host a website which is a net core website and uh, app name and so on we are also allocated, we are also allocated a VM because at the end of the day, we, this has to be hosted in a VM, right? So you can see here, it is allocating us a standard S1 VM. So if you go and see this, there's a standard S1 VM, which it is allocating to us, which is having, you know, approximately 2 GB RAM and so on and so on, right? So the question here is that, when we go and host this app service, do we have access to this virtual machine or not? That, that That's what the question is. So the question says out here, if you look at the question, a pass solution, that means this app service, the pass solution that hosts web apps in Azure provides full control of OS, right? So this OS, this OS, which you have, you know, on which your .NET Core application will be running, do you have access to that? So the answer is no, you don't have access to the, uh, you know, to the VM. Because what happens is when you go and host your web application, so you have your code out here, your website code, right? Whatever it is in C Sharp or PHP or .NET, right? That website code, when you go and host using the app service, what the app service does is the app service goes and looks into shared VMs. So there are lots of VMs out there, huge uh, fabric of VMs. So you have like must be VM1, VM2, VM3, lots of VM which are running, right? So he will go and he will find, you know, appropriate VM. And in this VM, he will go and he will host your web application. So this VM, you know, you don't have any kind of access. You cannot go to this, you cannot go directly to this VM by using the terminal services. You can't do that. You can't access the start program files or the desktop of it. This is only purely for hosting your app service. So this is the EAS infrastructure as a service and this one is a PS. So at, when you say that you are using a PaaS solution, that means that you don't want to deal with infrastructure. You don't want to deal with raw operating system. You don't want to do things yourself, right? So whenever you are using a pass solution, the pass solution will ensure that he will manage the infrastructure internally inside it. And you only have access to the pass UI to the pass uh, framework, right? So this statement out here is false. You don't have any access 
to the operating system. So this is a false solution. Let's look at the second statement. A platform as a solution that hosts web apps in Azure provides the ability to scale the platform automatically. Scale the plat scale the platform automatically means if I have uh, let's say I have one VM you know which is running my application and for some reason you know if I need two VMs let's say the load increases will it go and automatically uh, increase from one VM to two VM so let's go and see so if you go here to this uh, uh, to this plan so remember that we have this app service what we create create right and we are associated with a plan this plan here you can see here at this moment I am using this ASP REST 956C2 plan. This plan out here says you know that what kind of machine you have. So if you see here for example look at this I am selecting the S1 series which is a 2 GB RAM and if you see down below look at the included features for S1 series it says auto scale up to 10 instances. Auto scale up to 10 instances so that means that if if needed you know he can auto scale up to 10 instances right if I go and select a more stronger instance you know for example s1 is a less stronger instance but let us say if I take this 4 GB RAM look at this we have this p1 v2 series out here if I take this 4 GB RAM out here you can see now the auto scale has become 20 instances so yes you know uh, these uh, you know uh, app services out here have the ability to automatically auto scale you know depending on the load right so the answer to this question to, to this sentence out here is that yes it is true and that's what is expected and that's what is expected from a pass solution right so this is true a, a platform as a service solution that hosts web apps in azure provides professional development services to continuously add features to custom application to continuously add features to custom application yes if you see nowadays you know people are talking about ci cd continuous integration continuous development so the question the the this statement out here says that any pass solution out there like for example the app service right specifically when you are saying pass solution for hosting web apps in azure is app service uh, you know it provides professional development services to continuously add uh, features to the custom application absolutely we have something called as the azure devops i would suggest to please go and watch the practical video where i have shown how to go and continuously build continuously code continuously check in continuously integrate and go live on the azure app service so i would suggest to go and watch this video right so uh, we have something called as the continuous integration and continuous development in azure which is termed as the Azure DevOps. So this Azure DevOps, what it does is you can go ahead, you can check in your code, right? Then this code, what is checked in, it can get built automatically, right? Once it builds automatically, even you can run your test case, your unit test cases can be run. Then afterwards you can go and you can put this into production, right? Now when you go and put this into production actually it actually at this moment it uses the app service so the app service you know can be plugged in into the azure devops pipeline very easily right so i would suggest to go and watch this video where i've explained how the azure uh, devops pipeline works so the answer to this second thing the the last uh, three the third thing out here is that it is true that we have lots of development services given in Azure which helps you to continuously add new features to the custom application um, automatically from the back end so it, it does not have to be a manual process right so false true and true so let's start with question number seven when you are implementing software as a service solution you are responsible for configuring high availability let us read this sentence again when you are implementing SaaS solution you are responsible for configuring high availability first thing this statement is false why because whenever we go ahead and we take a SaaS solution we are only responsible to use the software 
we are responsible to use the software must be we are responsible to configure the software data so for example uh, let us say if you go to Azure out here so you can see here I am at the marketplace marketplace is where I can buy a lot of things right and in, in marketplace normally it is a SaaS solution so for example I want to take an hospital management system or people call it as EMR right so there are lots of EMR out there for example I can take this open EMR out here now this open EMR out here you know helps me to go and do you know the billing it helps me to do labs and a lot of things right so what I have to do I have to go and create it and then I have to go and load probably the doctor master I have to load uh, you know probably the pricing list but I am not responsible here to configure that the scalability of this that has to be done by the provider that has to be done by the provider uh, at this moment you can see the provider here is someone called a surpass so he should do it right so first thing this first sentence out here is false that as a SaaS solution, I am only responsible to configure it. Now let us look at the question. So the question says, review the above underlined text and if it makes the statement correct, select no change is needed. If the statement is incorrect, so yes, the statement above is incorrect, select the choice that makes the statement, right? So it makes the statement correct. So first thing, no change is needed. So this one here, uh, I will not select this. Right? This cross indicates no selection. So if the statement is incorrect, select the answer choice that makes the statement correct. Define scalability rules. Again, no. High availability or scalability, uh, you know, those kind of things we don't define in SAS. SAS is mostly, uh, you know, is where, you know, the person just goes ahead, creates your application and starts using it. Right? So no, this is again false. Installing the SAS solution, no. Like, we go and we create the SaaS solution and automatically it is installed into one of those VMs. So over here, I will go and I will say create it, but I will not go and define, you know, where is the VM, which operating system it is. That is not my headache, right? So again, installing the SaaS solution is, I will not select, right? Configuring the SaaS solution, yes. It's my responsibility to configure the master tables. It's my responsibility to configure the parameters the configuration as per my the business rules and so on right so this is the only thing which i need to do but the other all things you know are it is not connected with sas as such right so d is the correct answer so that brings us to the end of this session if you're interested to take the rest of the three hours of course you can send us a mail at questpond at questpond.com or you can also go through the link provided in the description for more details right so i hope that you enjoyed this video keep learning stay safe happy learning thank you very much